I've been doing a ton of research on the solar power system that I want to install up at the property. Uh, cost is a factor, size is a factor, uh, trying to balance how much you spend, how much power you actually need um, is really challenging. Um, luckily, the price of a lot of stuff has started to come down recently. Um, and I actually pulled the trigger on this Sun Gold Power 10,000 watt all in one solar charge inverter. Um, this will give me the ability to uh, get 10,000 watts split phase, so 240, I'll be able to run our well pump off of it. Um, and as we have, as our power needs increase, um, I'll be able to expand the system. I can always add more batteries. I can add multiple of these units, uh, up to six units. So that'd give me up to 60,000 watts of power. Um, and uh, I can continue to add more solar panels as needed. Now, for a small cabin like what we're building, I don't foresee needing more than 20,000 watts. As a matter of fact, this will probably do just fine uh, for what we're doing, just the 10,000 watts. But uh, it would be nice to have that little extra uh, availability of power if we did need it. Like if we were um, running the well pump and I was trying to run the welder or something all at the same time. So let's jump into this thing. I want to kind of show you guys, uh, the, the terminals, all the, all, all the stuff on this thing. Uh, I can't turn it on cause the battery hasn't shown up yet. Um, but, uh, kind of walk through the process and what we're going to build and why, uh, because tried to, tried to build this system or design this system uh, with the ability to start small, uh, get power at the property so that we can start building the system or start building the cabin and have power readily available uh, and then be able to expand that as uh, as we needed uh, in the future. Um, you know, so we didn't have to go out and, and invest 10, 20, $30,000 right up front. We can do a smaller investment, maybe five, 6,000 bucks have the power that we need for right now um, and be able to add a few panels here, a few panels there, battery here, battery there, uh, slowly building up our uh, capacity of the property. So let's check this out. So obviously I already took this thing out of the box. Um, that's kind of the place I wanted to start here was the packaging was great. Uh, doesn't look like there was any damage or chance of damage. Um, FedEx drivers are notorious for throwing sh stuff around uh, and they didn't screw this one up. FedEx did deliver this one, but there's the box it came with. So uh, it was packaged in this heavy foam. I've got this thing sitting on uh, the, the foam that was over the top of this thing. There's a couple of terminals at the bottom that I didn't want to screw up, but I did want to stand it up for the video. So that's what that thing's doing. Uh, it came with the cable so that you can uh, expand the units, right? So this cable right here uh, plugs into a port on the bottom. We'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and it goes from one unit to the other so that you can start pairing them up so that you can jump to the 20,000 watts. If you've got two, you can add all the way up to 60, six units, getting you 60,000 watts. And these cables are just communication cables that go between them so that they all know what the other one is doing. Came with a, uh, like a cat five cable. Not exactly sure what that one's for, probably for battery communication. Um, and it came with an instruction manual and the main lugs, a couple little sleeves for the input wires, a uh, little wrench, the nuts, uh, instruction manuals in there. I, I got online, downloaded the user manual, printed it out so it's a little bit bigger. They've got a ton of information um, along with all the different wiring diagrams. So depending on how many units you want to, uh, how many units you want to add, it shows you exactly how to do it and how to wire them. Um, it's got all the little fault codes, 
uh, all the information that gets displayed on this screen right here and the best way to go through and set all that stuff up so that um, you get it set up the way that you need to because there's this thing has the ability to be wired into the grid it does not send power back to the grid uh, this is not a grid tied system but it uh, allows that if you do have grid power there you can charge your batteries through this if you're not generating enough solar so um, keep your batteries topped off on a cloudy day or something if you do have uh, grid so just giving you the ability to, to do that you could also hook up a generator to it um, so that you're running the generator power into here on a cloudy day if your batteries are starting to go low this thing will charge your batteries via the generator you just got to wire it up correctly so um, also has Wi-Fi module in here. Uh, gonna have to figure out how, where exactly I plug that in, but uh, it's got a little cable uh, down at the bottom. There's a port for it, and then uh, the little Wi-Fi antenna for that thing, so that you can connect. Uh, I think it's Wi-Fi, uh, not Bluetooth. Uh, that way you can use the app on your phone and see what's going on with uh, your power system, even if you're not at the even if even if you're not at the property so like we may be down here in the valley like we are right now i'll be able to check and see you know is there a problem are we generating enough power uh do i need to uh start up the backup generator you know whatever right let me get this thing rearranged so that i can show you the ports i'm going to pull this bottom panel off show you where you connect everything and show you all the ports on the bottom it does have a breaker over here on the side this is the ac input breaker so like i said you can tie it to the grid or the generator coming in this would be the on and off for that um, just so that you can start shutting off power to the unit if you ever do have to work on it in here and you don't want anything live inside of it so this is the bottom of the unit you can see the on off switch the pass throughs for all your terminals that are inside underneath this cover. We'll have a look at those in a second. Uh, these are the parallel connections so that you can connect multiple units together, up to six of these units. Uh, your battery communication uh, port, Wi-Fi port, so it's got a little cable and a little Wi-Fi module so that you can connect, for, connect your Wi-Fi. A USB for plugging a laptop or a computer into this thing. And the dry contact, I'm not 100% sure what this is for. Uh, I need to do a little bit of reading in the instruction manual and figure it out. Uh, and we'll talk about that maybe in the next video. But let me open this up and let's have a look at the terminals and all that stuff inside. Starting over here on the right hand side, <clears throat> these are your photovoltaic inputs. So your solar panels connect here. You've got two inputs. There's a positive and negative for each. You can get 11,000 watts of solar uh, connected up to this thing. And I believe it's a 500 volt uh, input on each, each, uh, each side. So um, you, can, uh, you can size your, your solar runs you know, appropriately so that you can get them uh, all run in series, connected up, uh, and that'll be your input for your solar. Moving to the to the left, uh, this is your battery input right here. So positive, negative. Um, make sure that you're sizing your your uh, your battery cable appropriately going into this thing. Uh, you don't want to use too small. We're actually going to use a two watt uh, cable coming into this thing. Right now we're planning on starting with a, uh, a reasonably priced uh, 16,000 watt uh, capacity lithium ion battery uh, that we found, which we'll be talking about that in another episode. Um, but uh, that's where your, where your battery is coming in, connecting right there. And then this is your communications, all of your, let's see if I can show this. All of your, uh, your Wi-Fi, your battery communication, the parallel connections, that's what this little block is right here. Let's see if I can show that real good. So all the way over here on the left-hand side, you can, say, you can see your AC out, your AC in. 
uh, you can see you've got a ground, a neutral, uh, and two, two hots. So this gives you your ability to run uh, 240 and you, would, you could run this out to a simple load center uh, that you could buy on Amazon for like 80, 90 bucks. Uh, to start out, we're gonna run a little bit of electricity in the uh, solar shed that we're uh, using and have a box outside so that we can, uh, we can plug into this thing when we need to. Uh, but this would go over to your load center um, in the cabin that you're building, you know, whatever you're doing there. So that would be your, out, your outlet. This is your AC inlet. So you could wire in a generator into this. You could wire in uh, grid power coming from, uh, coming from a normal grid system. Uh, that's not something I'm planning on doing uh, anytime soon, but it's nice to be able to have that ability uh, to, uh, if you've got a cloudy day and your solar is, hasn't been uh, charging your batteries as much, having the ability to flip that switch, allow this thing to, uh, to charge your batteries with power other than your solar so that you can continue to function and keep going. Like I said, this isn't a, a, a grid tied system, so you're not gonna be able to sell power back with this particular, particular unit, uh, but you can get it set up so that if you need to charge your reserve batteries, if you're not getting enough solar, uh, you can do that off of the grid or off of a, ge a generator, which is probably the more common thing. So you can see the cooling fans that are down here. Uh, they are drawing the air uh, through the top up here and down. On each side, it's got these uh, little grates. Let me go ahead and pop this cover off and let's have a look at what's inside here. Let's see, here's our fans. Uh, there's uh, some protective plastic in here that also acts kind of as a duct. So you've got input, uh, you've got uh, fresh air intake over on each side and the air is drawn into uh, and down through the unit and then is exhausted out here through the bottom. So, but everything looks really good in here. Um, I don't see anything to be concerned about. Um, I definitely wouldn't want this off while I was powered up. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this thing back up. Uh, but I always like looking in here and seeing, uh, you know, what they got going on and if there's anything uh, that looks out of place or funky, but this looks great. So let's take a minute and talk about the system that we've designed for up at the property. Like I was saying, the Sun Gold inverter charger really is the heart of the system. So we've got that, and bear with me, I'm not an artist. So Sun Gold, 10 kilowatt, that's our inverter charger. Uh, we've got a 16 kilowatt uh, DIY battery. So we're going to put that together up at the property, connect those. That's going to act as our reserve power uh, for the time being. And we'll have the ability to expand on that if we need to. We can, you know, add as many batteries as we want. If we want to try out some server rack batteries, um, more of these, you know, whatever that looks like, we've got that ability to expand. Uh, we've also got solar panels and we're going to get some used some used panels uh, we uh, we're currently looking at about four kilowatts of used panels which we can pick up uh, fairly cheap uh, with Santan solar being local here in the valley um, not having to we can just swing over there pick them up and we've got them we don't have to pay any shipping or anything so at this point, we'll have power coming in, we'll have storage, we'll be converting to AC. Uh, then all we've got to do is hook up a load center uh, and we'll be able to run stuff like our welder, um, lights, charge batteries for the power tools that we're using, all that kind of stuff. So 
realistically, this is a pretty simple system. There's not a lot of components. I'm sure we'll add some little things here and there to make things easier, but um, with just that amount of stuff, you'll be producing power and you'll be able to run some pretty decent uh, uh, items like our well pump will run off of this just fine. I can run a big welder off of this um, and I'll have a lot of versatility and the ability to expand this later on as our power needs increase. We can add more batteries, we can add more panels, we can add an, uh, up to six of these Sun Gold inverter chargers, um, you know, if we needed that much power. I can't imagine a, a scenario where we need it. But uh, that gives us the ability to really expand and grow the system as our needs grow up there. Now, you might be asking, we don't have the cabin built. Where the heck are we going to put all this stuff? So we went out and we've got a 20-foot shipping container that's coming. We're going to install it inside the shipping container and use the shipping container um, as uh, the base or the foundation to mount uh, at least the first string of solar panels. Um, it gives us a lot of versatility in if uh, we move this equipment into the garage or replace it with equipment in the garage, then we've got this container that's kind of a self-contained power station that uh, maybe we buy another piece, piece of property later and we can just load this thing up and take it with us. And what we're gonna do in the container is we're gonna frame uh, a, a small room in the back width of the container, but maybe only three or four foot deep so that we can mount all this stuff in it, have that insulated uh, so that the batteries uh, can be somewhat conditioned. Um, do I wanna install a heater and a air conditioner and all that stuff? No, hopefully I don't have to, but if I do, at least the space is uh, pretty small, so it should be efficient to condition that space. Um, the lithium ion phosphate batteries, uh, have to stay in a certain temperature range for performance reason, reasons. So that's one of the reasons why we're going to do that. But it'll be a nice little room inside there. All this stuff can stay in there. I'm hoping the residual heat uh, just from the inverter and, you know, all that stuff that's uh, in there can, can maintain the heat over the winter. And we'll see how it does over the summer. I don't think it'll get too hot, but we'll just have to monitor it and see. Um, also, we needed the storage space for the tools and all the stuff that we're going to be using as we build the cabin next year. So uh, just kind of a, a bonus uh, heavy duty storage shed for us up there, whether it be temporary or long term, uh, it gives us some options. So hopefully you found this video interesting. Uh, stick around because we're going to be doing videos on all of this. As we install it over the next couple of months, it should be a fun journey. Uh, we'll see you on the next video.